Hi everyone! In this video, we'll see the main features of the BYB Telemetry software. We can start with the Device tab, which is the best way to connect to your BYB Telemetry Data Acquisition Unit, send configuration and download runs. We'll see this feature in detail in another episode. Then, second feature is the File Browser, which is the best way to select a file, but if you want, you can also open a run directly from your PC by using this button located above the file browser. That will open the Open File dialog. Then you have the Control Panel, which is characterized by several buttons that let you click and select between wheel, suspension, travel percentage, or travel millimeters. Then the Leverage button, which enables you to load a custom leverage and apply it directly to your dataset. Then we have the Lap feature, which is a tab that lets you analyze your times and performances by drawing the start line, finish line, and the splits. Then we have the Run Data menu. These data represents the mandatory data that you have to fill in before starting an acquisition. All these data will be used to perform the calculations and to show the correct amount of travel and speed. Then we have several tabs. For example, we have the Stack View tab. This tab is actually used to see all the data in a stacked configuration, and it's very easy, for example, to identify stops and to trim a selection. If you want to make a selection, you can simply click, drag, and release and then the selection is applied. All the average values here are automatically updated, and if you want to go back to the original extended view, you can double-click anywhere, and you are able to get back to the original selection. In this case, you can see the fork, the shock, the speed, the IMU, and the brakes. For example, the brake sensors used in this example are analog. In fact, they are not like on slash off, but they are ratiometric, so you can see the difference based on how much the rider pulled the lever. Then we have the suspension view, which is characterized by the same charts as the stack view, but shown in a different configuration. In this case, you can superimpose all the charts you want. For example, we can decide to plot the fork velocity and the shock velocity. If we apply, for example, wheel, we are also able to see a change in the data set because we are considering the rear axle instead of the suspension movement now. Then you can also decide to plot the speed sensor and the GPS sensor, you can also decide to plot the total IMU acceleration, the XYZ, as well for the gyroscope XYZ. And then you can also decide to plot, for example, the brakes, like the front brake and the rear brake. And as we said before, in this case, we are running analog brake sensors. Then we have the position distribution. The position distribution is a very useful statistical chart. You can decide to plot, for example, the front and the rear for the full run or the front selection and the rear selection. For example, speaking about the rear run. Then you can decide also to plot the brakes. You can decide to change the chart type, and you can also decide to change the accuracy and to apply a different kind of grid. You can decide to hide zeros, like here, deleting the first data column. You can also enlarge the chart if you want by clicking on this button, and in this view, you are able to manage better the dimension of all the axes. On top of that, you can do several things like we are showing you now. while in this other chart you can decide to synchronize the dataset with the selection. Then we have the velocity distribution. The velocity distribution is very similar to the position distribution, but is referred to the shaft velocity. And in this case, you can also decide to plot just the front selection, or the front and rear, for the full run. You can decide to change the chart type, the grid type, the accuracy of the chart. You can decide to hide the zeros, for example, or to set, for example, a high slash low speed cutoff to identify the transition between low speed and high speed. You can as well decide to enlarge the chart in order to manage the zoom better and understand better the superimposition between the lines, and so on. Okay, then we have the dynamic balance. The dynamic balance is a very useful chart that lets you understand the behavior and balance of your bike from a dynamic point of view. You can also here decide to plot just the front, just the rear, or to synchronize the data set with the selection. Then we have the position versus velocity. The position versus velocity is a chart characterized by a lot of different configurations. For example, you can decide to plot the lines, you can decide to plot the scatter, you can decide to move the scale up and down, you can decide to synchronize the data set with the selection, or you can also enlarge the chart like we showed before. Then we have the stroke length chart, which it can be used to compare, for example, the stroke length for the full run versus the selection. Or you can decide to change the type of the chart, adding a different grid, or change the accuracy of the chart itself. 
as well as hiding zeros. Then we have the IMU distribution. These charts are referred to the internal IMU, meaning the internal accelerometer and the internal gyroscope. You can decide to change the type of chart or, for example, like in the other charts we saw before, you can decide to change the grid accuracy or to enlarge the charts for better visualization. Then we have the incremental charts that can be very useful, especially for long runs, and you can decide to plot the front and the rear, or, for example, the accelerometer and the gyroscope lines. Then we have the IMU charts. The IMU charts are relating the suspension position with the internal IMU, so the accelerometer and the gyroscope. Also with this chart, you can change the type of lines, you can enlarge the chart, and you can synchronize the chart with the selection. On top of that, UOU can switch to suspension velocity in order to relate, for example, the internal acceleroemptor or gyroscope with the front and rear wheel velocities. As well, in this chart, you can changing everything about the charts. Then we have the brake and speed distribution. It's a distribution very similar to the others we saw, and we have several configurations we can apply in order to manage the visualization of these charts. Our next tab, the frequency analysis, can be configured and plotted as you wish. You can decide to remove charts, enlarge, synchronize with the selection, and so on. It's used to run advanced analysis on suspensions. Then we have the summary, which is a nice tab resuming and howing all the values you can extrapolate from the various charts. Also here, by using this button, you can decide to synchronize the data set with the current selection we are running. Then we have the comparison. The comparison lets you load two runs on the same track. So with this button, you can decide to open a new run, and then you are able to see all the data and all the tabs according to the two loaded runs. You can also decide to plot the data based on the GPS distance or speed sensor distance. Then we have the auto-tuning, which we will look at in more depth in another episode. In this case, we have, for example, the possibility of choosing the discipline, the rider level, and, for example, the kind of terrain. Then you can easily click on the Tune button and follow the instructions in order to receive direct suggestion on your setup. The last tab is represented by the notes. It's a very nice and tidy way to keep track of all the changes you are applying to the bike. Then we have the Settings tab. In the Settings window, we can decide, for example, the default runs route path in order to open or download all the runs in the pre-configured location. Then we have the sensor settings, and in this tab you can select a specific sensor length in order to properly load the suspension data. Then we have the color palette. In this configuration menu, you can decide to change or to modify, for example, the colors for each data. Then axis scale configuration lets you configure and customize the scale of specific charts in order to make the visualization easier and more convenient. As other more hidden features, it's possible to open a run using also this menu or, for example, saving a new selection when a new selection is active as a new BYB file or saving a selection without stops. Then, we can also export the raw data as a CSV file, as well the selection or the summary data as an Excel file. Then we can also export the current data for a video overlay work and download the video overlay manual and resources needed for this scope. You can decide to use also the spring calculator, offered by Fluid Focus and Super Alloy Racing, in order to compute the best spring for you. Here you can also decide to export the dataset for linkage software animation. Plus, through the top bar menu you can do some other thing like check for updates. As bonus features, you can use these two buttons to enlarge the current selection and modify it. Or, looking at the GPS map, you can also decide to plot the route accordingly to a specific sensor characteristics like this, so you can understand in which part of the track you are faster or slower. We forgot to mention them before, but here we have also the altitude chart, which is computed starting from the GPS data, and you can see the slope as well. Thank you watching this software overview today. See you in the next episode.